Hey everyone, I wanted to record a quick little video to clear up something that we talked about in chapter 20 that may have been a little bit confusing. So in chapter 20, we talked about the concepts associated with blood flow throughout the circulation. In examining Poisson's law, we came to the conclusion that the best and most efficient way for the body to regulate blood flow into certain organs and tissues is to go through vasoconstriction and vasodilation. By regulating the radius of blood vessels, particularly arterioles that feed into those capillary supplies, we can determine which organs and which tissues get the vast majority of blood supply under different situations. So we looked at a diagram like this in chapter 20, so I want us to spend a little bit more time and look at this a little bit more critically. So first we are going to look at a situation like this at rest. So the first thing for us to consider here is that at rest we have a cardiac output that equates to roughly five liters per minute. So again, that means that the left ventricle is pumping out five liters of blood every minute. So if you look at the various percentages here, you can see of that five liters per minute, about how much of that total blood supply is being divvied up to various organs like the GI tract, the ventricular myocardium of the heart, the kidneys, the bone, the brain, the skin, and the skeletal muscle. So if you look at the percentages here, you can see that we don't exactly divvy up the blood supply equally. Some tissues and some organs get a bigger share than others. So what I want us to do is uh, I want us to actually calculate how much of that cardiac output each organ is getting. We'll focus on uh, the GI tract, the kidneys, the brain, and the skeletal muscle. We don't need to worry too much about those lower percentages for now. Okay, so if we have a cardiac output of five liters per minute, how much is the brain getting? Well, if we take at face value the fact that the brain is receiving 15%, then 15% of five liters per minute would equate to the brain receiving 0.75 liters of blood every minute at rest. If we look at the GI tract, we get a range of 20 to 25%, so we'll take the lower end of that and say that 20% of five liters per minute would equate to one liter per minute. So you might be surprised to hear that the GI tract actually gets more blood every minute than your brain does at rest. Same deal with the kidneys. The kidneys also receive about 20% of the cardiac output, so that would also equate to one liter per minute. And then same deal with the skeletal muscle as well. 20% of the cardiac output equates to one liter per minute. So if you add all these numbers together, you can come to the conclusion that these four tissues, the brain, the GI tract, the kidneys, and the skeletal muscle, receive the vast majority of the blood supply at rest. So now we want to look at how these things change when we go from rest to heavy exercise. So in chapter 19, we talked all about how during exercise, the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system is going to engage secrete epinephrine into the blood, release norepinephrine from sympathetic postganglionic neurons, and those two things together are going to drastically increase the cardiac output, both by increasing the heart rate and by increasing the stroke volume. So when we go to an exercise setting, as we see here, we can expect a lot more blood to be supplied per minute, but ultimately we still need to divvy up that blood to the different tissues and organs. So with heavy exercise, you can see we go from five liter per minute all the way up to 25 liter per minute as our cardiac output. So if you look at these percentages here, you can definitely appreciate that through the actions of the sympathetic division, vasoconstriction and vasodilation, we have restricted blood flow to some places while opening up blood flow to others. The f thing that should jump off the page to you, obviously, is that the skeletal muscle is now receiving 80 to 85% of the overall blood supply, whereas it was only receiving about 20% before. So that much is pretty obvious. We don't really need to do too much to convince ourselves of that. What I want to spend some time talking about here, and this is the point of confusion I mentioned at the start of this video, look at what's going on with the brain. The brain goes from 15% at rest to about three to 4% with heavy exercise. 
Now, if you're just paying attention to the percentages, that could totally give you the impression that the brain is now receiving less blood. And that's not going to make much sense because you at this point in the semester, you understand how important the brain is, how important it is that the brain receives oxygen and other nutrients. So it really doesn't seem like a good idea to restrict blood flow to the brain. So what I'm going to convince you of here is that overall blood supply to the brain really has not changed, even though that percentage has gone down. So look at what's going on here with the brain. So let's take that 3% figure. Well, we are taking 3% of the cardiac output, but we are taking the 3% of the new cardiac output, which is now 25 liters per minute. And 3% of 25 is 0.75 liters per minute. That's exactly the same amount of blood the brain was receiving before. If you take the 4% figure, then you could say that the brain is receiving slightly more blood, but the conservative estimate would have, at minimum, the brain is receiving the same blood supply it was before, if not a little bit more. So definitely we can see here that even though that percentage has gone down, exercise is not reducing the amount of blood the brain is receiving, just the overall share of the blood that is being pumped by the heart. It's still receiving the same rate of blood flow every minute. Now, if we look at the other tissues, the GI tract has also gone down to about 3%. So 3% of 25 liters per minute would also be 0.75 liters per minute, which is actually a 25% reduction from the one liter per minute that we saw before. So because of a lot of vasoconstriction being mediated by alpha adrenergic receptors in the smooth muscle that feeds the capillary beds of uh, the GI tract, even though there's a 400% increase in how much blood is circulating throughout the body, the GI tract is now receiving 25% less blood than it was before. So that is actually a very huge and very significant development. Same deal with the kidneys. The kidneys are now down to about 2% of the overall blood supply. 2% of 25 liters per minute is half a liter per minute, and that is actually a 50% reduction from what the kidneys got at rest. So very much the same sort of thing that we just saw with the GI tract. Through vasoconstricting the arterioles that feed blood into the kidneys and into the GI tract, we are greatly reducing the volume of blood that the kidneys and the GI tract receive because as we've mentioned before, the kidneys and the GI tract are non-essential for the fight or flight response. Now, let's look at skeletal muscle. So if we take the 80% figure with skeletal muscle, 80% of 25 liters per minute is 20 liters per minute. The skeletal muscle is now receiving 20 liters of blood every minute. That is a 1900% increase compared to what the skeletal muscles got at rest. So we can very much frame this in the context of the fight or flight response. Skeletal muscles are absolutely essential to exercise or getting away from something that's chasing you, getting yourself back into a safe situation. And because in chapter 10, we explored how energy costly muscle contraction is, you can understand why it would be important for the skeletal muscle to now receive a much richer and much more voluminous blood supply. Okay, that's going to do it for this quick little video. The main thing I wanted to convince you of is that even though the brain is receiving a smaller percentage of the overall blood supply, it's still receiving the same volume of blood every minute because the cardiac output has increased so much. So thanks for your attention, and I will see you next time. So long.